Now, I've heard people say, man, I want to be like Bishop Jakes. Man, to be like Bishop Jakes, you got to go through what Bishop Jakes went through to, to, to be like him or to get what he has. It, it, it can't happen. No. You're not designed that way. Right. So, so what we're talking about here is that you have to be doing according to your purpose. Amen. You got to be doing it. And so when people talk about, well, I don't know what my purpose is, okay, well, then just start moving. Right. Just start doing something, okay? Welcome to Kingdom Life Ministries International of Elizabethtown, Kentucky, headed by senior pastors Dr. Raynard and Delillian Romero. We invite you to join us at 115 South Mulberry Street, Elizabethtown, Kentucky, for our Sunday service. This week... Dr. Raynard Romero will be teaching on finding your purpose, knowing your purpose, and doing your purpose. Here now is Dr. Romero. This morning, talk this morning 
about wisdom yeah. and knowledge yeah. and, and about King Solomon uh -huh. and uh, the book of Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, the Song of Solomon, which is to me the most mysterious book in the Bible. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. In Revelation, the Song of Solomon, yeah, yeah. And all this stuff, you know, sounds like you're trying to pick up a girl or something. I'm like, <laughs> I don't understand all this. But anyway, he, uh, he brought out this morning mm -hmm. about, the, about knowledge and wisdom. Mm -hmm. And I've used that term, having been raised up in the church, you, you learn certain churchy terms or certain uh, things, and you just kind of use them without even realizing what you're saying. Right. But the knowledge of the Lord mm. is important, but the fear of the Lord ah. is wisdom. Come on. Right. And so I, I remember when I was young, and I'd read the fear of the Lord, the fear mm. of the Lord. Why is the important to fear God? I don't want to be scared of him. Because I was, mm -hmm. you know, thunderbolts any minute it's going to strike me down right. because I said a cuss word or something. Oh, but oh. anyway, <laughs> Brother Bill has been teaching, Pastor Bill has been teaching mm -hmm. on those three books mm -hmm. and the subject of wisdom and knowledge and, mm -hmm. and King Solomon and all of his learning. And, you know, he was so wise, you know, he prayed for wisdom, but he was so wise, God gave him that gift, but yet he didn't use it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, he used it for everybody else except yeah, himself. Yeah. He created some tremendous uh, boo-boos in his yeah. life, yeah. let's just say. <laughs> approximately a thousand or so yeah. uh, women. Uh, <laughs> he, uh, he decided the way to make peace with the whole world was to marry a, a daughter of the king. And that on. way the king ain't going to kill you because he don't want to kill his own young yeah, yeah, so, yeah. But, uh, but I'm going to go back to... Proverbs 1, chapter 1, verse 7. Uh -huh. And I'm going to read this in the Amplified Version. Uh -huh. It kind of brings out the word fear a little bit. It, does and it said, the reverent fear, the fear of the Lord, okay? Right. But it says, parentheses, the reverent fear. Right. To, to awesome, worshipful, a worshipful mm -hmm. fear of the Lord. Yes. That is worshiping Him and regarding Him as truly awesome. Mm -hmm. Being amazed. Okay, with his awesomeness, being amazed with his mm -hmm. his uh, holiness. Okay, regarding him as truly awesome. Yes. But the fear of the Lord is the beginning and the preeminent, which means the most important, Come on. the highest, Come the on. utmost, Come on. the preeminent part of knowledge. Mm. Yeah. Its starting point and its as essence. And then the next verse says, "But arrogant fools." despise skillful and godly wisdom mm -hmm. and instruction and self-discipline. Mm -hmm. yes. Come on. Come on. The ugliest word. Oh, uh, self-discipline. Yes. <laughs> so I'm not up here to teach. I'm just saying that, that <laughs> the beginning of wisdom. We don't just want knowledge. There's <clears throat> lots of intelligent people. In fact, some of the highest IQs are sitting in prisons. Uh, well, And uh, right. they thought in their arrogance that they were so smart that they could figure out a way to do this or that or steal this or steal that right. and get away with it. Yeah. All you got to do is... And they find it as a game sometimes. Even how to be a, a serial killer. Oh, I could do this and this and this and this and get away with it. And maybe they do. Some of them do. We know they do. But the arrogant fools <laughs> despise skillful and godly Come wisdom on, and instruction and self-discipline. Yeah. And I just want to ask you, where do you get your wisdom from? Well, it has to come from God. Wait a minute. I don't get it from psychology? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, what about a 12-step program? Um, well. Well. Uh, and you know what? Mm -hmm. Those things. How about talking to your best girlfriend? Mm -hmm. Hey, girl, what do you think about this? Yeah. Well, I need your advice on that. Uh -huh. but, and all that's good. Okay? That's but pieces of wisdom. Right. Yeah. Well, we're talking about the 100% gifting mm -hmm. of wisdom. Glory we attain God. the knowledge, yeah. yes. and then we put it into practice. And that's what wisdom is. Yeah. It's putting into practice what we've learned. Right. right. Okay? And so those who are evil and arrogant and fools, they put into practice what they've learned mm -hmm. for the dark side. Well, yeah. But we, as children of God, Come on. as the body of Christ, yeah. Yeah. Bride of Christ, we put into practice the wisdom of God in the right way, the correct yes. way, the yes. way of life. Yes. And so today, 
Let's not despise what we have learned, knowledge-wise, yeah. and don't despise the wisdom that God gives us mm. through the Word of God. Come on. That's, prim that's got to be your primary. Mm. It's okay to add a little of this and a little of that, talk yeah. to this and that, but primarily it has to be the Word of God right. because it's the ultimate. Yeah. It's, it's the supreme. Right. Yeah. As it said, it's preeminent. Uh -huh. Okay, It's the preeminent part of knowledge. So that's all I've got to say. I praise the Lord for that. Now I want to give us a short prayer before yeah. we enter into the rest of the service. Amen. Lord Jesus, oh, we call on your name. Yes. Because your name is great. Yes. You are our great creator. Thank you, Lord. We submit Thank ourselves you, to your wisdom. Thank you, Lord. Thank Not just your knowledge, Thank but your wisdom. Thank Lord, give us more wisdom. Mm. Make us susceptible mm. and, and obedient to you your wisdom, Lord, yes, Lord, and to that which you want to empower into our lives, yes. not for our use, yes. but so that we can help others yes. attain a relationship yes. with you, yes, Lord, a yes. holy reverence, yes, fearsome yes, relationship with you, Jesus. Mm. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Amen. 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 Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Good to have you all here. Um, yeah, we've been we've been in the book of uh, in the in the wisdom books as it were. And, and one of the and one of the and one of the verses inside of, uh, of the book of Proverbs. I mean, of Proverbs was I mean, Ecclesiastes was uh, uh, Solomon was asking of the Lord to give him the knowledge of wisdom. Yeah. yeah. Imagine getting the knowledge of yeah. wisdom, not just wisdom, but the knowledge of wisdom. Knowledge. Yeah. And that is, and, 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 and it was just so big and things that sort so good and good. I'm glad that you enjoyed the time and things that sort and, 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 and we continue to pray that the Lord would give us wisdom and understanding. Brother David, it's good to see you this morning, brother. Hey, it's good to see you David. It's good to have you happy with us and stuff like that. My scripture this morning is the same one that, that, that I made before, and I'm, I'm having the scripture because I, I have this testimony, but I can't. I, I just can't keep it. I just cannot keep it, okay? Come on. Because I've been praying that the Lord would, would like, you know, the situations I have with, with my son, back and forth, things that sort. And so I've been asking the Lord to help me with this, and back and forth, back and forth, and back and forth. And finally, it's like one of those times when, when the Lord taps you on the shoulder. It's like, you, you have those times when the Lord taps you on the shoulder, yeah. Yeah. And, you, and you're kind of ravaging back and forth, and taps you. It's, it's Excuse me, uh, excuse me. Right. And, last, and, and the Lord asked me a question. You just you got hate it when He asks you those questions. Uh. Okay, because He asked me a question. He says, "Well, what are you praying for? Uh. Are you praying for my will, or do you want to work out the way you want it to work?" Come out? on now. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's like yeah. Yeah. Are you are, are you praying for my will to be done, or are you praying it for it to work out the day the way that you wish for it to work out? Yeah. And like the writer said, Lord, I will shut my mouth uh -huh. and not open it again. Yeah. Because I, I I believe because I take that rebuke, and again this morning, uh, uh, the Lord had given to uh, to the first lady uh, a confirmation of, of just that conversation. Glory to God. She wasn't around there yesterday. When, when me and the Lord had this conversation back and forth, and so, but he asked me that question. But this morning, uh, she came to me, and, and she, what she said was a direct confirmation of that conversation yesterday. Right. Give it to the Lord. Let him do. Uh, the Lord knows what he's doing. Yes. yes. The Lord knows what he's doing. We belong to him. We are dead and buried and risen in the Lord Jesus Christ. We are set together with him in heavenly places. The Lord knows what he's doing, Pastor. That's right. Yes, sir. We, we have presented our petitions to him. We've come boldly before his throne of grace to help to, to get help in the time of trouble. He knows what it is. We've testified as Hezekiah did. Lord, we have no might against these mercies, I mean, against these armies, against these foes that have come out against us, but neither, neither know we what to do, but our eyes are on you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Because as in our conversation, as in our Sunday school lesson, as in the rest of it, we understand that He, His truth encompasses all of it. Mm. He is encompasses all of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when we say, Father God, I give you my life, I give you my children, yeah. 
I give you my, uh, I give you my, and I, I, and I ask you to order it, to you put it in order. You put it in order. You put it in order. And I, and, and, and I commit those things to you. We can do that. It just, with no anxiety. Because mm -hmm. however else it's working out, it's working for our good. And not only we're working for our good, but it's working for their good. Yes. Because we have taken it and we've given it to God and we've reverenced him. And we've reverenced him, as, as our sister said, we have reverenced him. Mm -hmm. we, have, we have shown him the fear of God, which is the reverence of God. We have put that preeminent above everything else. We said that you are the creator, your word. In the, word, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. And everything that is created was made for him and in him. Mm -hmm. So in the name of Jesus, when we call that, every single problem that we have, every single situation we have, every single circumstances that we have is inside of that name. And we ask him that you, Lord Jesus, would you resolve that? can expect that he would do just that. For that reason, for, for that reason, my scripture, and I keep going back to it and stuff like that because it's just still so, so absolute current to me mm. because it is every single day. I will bless the Lord at all times. Yes, Lord. Oh, yeah. 34, Psalm 34. Mm. I will bless the Lord mm. at all times mm. because of that, because of the things that we talked about just now, mm. because of the fact that he is, is, is the owner and, 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 and the author and the finisher of, of our faith. And our faith is not just in him, but our faith is in the faithfulness of his mercy and the grace for all that he is. Because he is the author and the finisher of that faith. Mm. We can bless him. We can bless him at all times. Because of what else is happening, we can bless him. Yeah. Because we know that he's working it out for our good. Yes. Yeah. His praise shall, be, shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. Yeah. Which, which is what I'm doing right now. I'm boasting. He's bigger than everything else. He's bigger than my problems. He's bigger than my fears. He's bigger than my addictions. He's bigger than all the things that are happening in my life. He's bigger than every single thing that, that there is in me and was in me. He's bigger than all of that. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. Yes. And the humble should hear of it. Uh -huh. And be glad. Yes. Yeah. Originally, oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. Yes, Lord. So that's what I'm telling you. Whatever those situations are, make it bigger than that. Mm. Magnify the Lord with me. I'm going to do it. I'm, I'm going to do it by myself. If I have to. I'm going to do it by myself because I know what he's done for me. I know that, 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 that I don't have to wake up at 2 o'clock in the morning worried about those things anymore. When I wake up at 2 o'clock in the morning now, I can roll over and say, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. And going back to sleep. Yeah. Whereas I used to have to worry about it, get up at 2 o'clock in the morning and uh, walk around and make some coffee and think about it some more and back and forth and, and worry. No. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Because I know in my heart of hearts. Even though I, even though my, my body has been asleep, my conscience has been awake, and that thing is still happening inside there. So when I come back to my consciousness, I can say, "Thank you, Lord." Thank you, Lord. Because regardless of what's happening, I know that you're working it out for my good. Amen. And you're blessing them, and you're protecting them, and whatever their situation is, you're not going to let them be destroyed. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So the humble says, "You're about to be God." I sought the Lord, and He heard me. And deliver me from all my fears. So it's divided, all of them. Every single one of those fears. The, every single one of those fears, Brother David. The Lord will deliver you from every single one of them. The Lord, regardless of what you see in you. <laughs> oh my God. Regardless of what you see in the mirror. And there is a, there's a host of angels wrapped around your life. There's a host of angels wrapped around your life. And buddy, they just ain't gonna, they just ain't gonna let you go. They're going to protect. Uh, uh, Pink has it. <laughs> the musician Pink has, 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 a, has a term in her song. And I say it so many times. Lord, don't let me get me. Mm -hmm. The Lord ain't going to let you get you, Brother David. Uh -huh. I don't care how hard you try. He ain't going to let you get you because you don't belong to you anymore. You belong to him. Yeah. And he ain't going to let you get you. Mm. He knows, he knows, he knows. Brother Robert, he knows it. Brother Jimmy, he knows it. But Bill, he knows it. So the Cindy, he knows it. Mm. So the Violet, he knows it. Mm -hmm. And he gonna let you get you. Come on, man. Because you belong to him. Glory to God. 
You are home to him and your body is dead. And you live in him. And we thank the Lord for it. This poor man cried. <laughs> and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. Right? Oh, taste and see. Try this. Try this. Take it inside you. Taste and see that the Lord is good. <laughs> taste and see that the Lord is good. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. But oh, fear the Lord, all you saints. So fear him. Fear him. As he said before, as our sister said before, and we go right back to that word, fear him. Reverence him. Give him that place. Give him that first place. Give him that, that exaltation. Give him that first place. Give him the knowledge of the fact that whatever is happening in your life, God has got you. He's not going to let you go over. He's not going to let you go under. He's not going to let you you'll be destroyed. Regardless of what it looks like, he is going to deliver you out of all of your troubles. As the pastor said to you before, he said those are his words. Those are his promises. Yes. And we laid those things before him. And he's good. He's good. But there's no lie in him. There's no lie in him. There's no failure in him. He can't fail. He cannot. He cannot fail, pastor. Mm -hmm. He cannot lie and he cannot fail. Right. It is so. So, yes. Father God, we thank you for this day. Yes. We thank you for your word. Yes. We thank you for your promises. Yes. We thank you for your grace to your people, Lord. We thank you for your spirit that is floating around this room. We thank you for the deliverance that's floating through this yes. place even yes. right now. We bless you, Father God, and we exalt you because you are bigger than every single thing that was attacking us yes. before we walked in that door and will be attacking us as we leave. You're bigger than all those things. And your grace is sufficient for us. And so we thank you for it. We bless you, Father. We exalt you. And we thank you for everything you are. You are our God. You are our God. You are our God. Amen. And our Lord, our Savior, our Keeper, our Strength. That you are our Father and our God. And we thank you for being our Father and our God. We kneel ourselves before you, Father God, in reverence and reverent worship. And we bless you for being our God. And we thank you for everything you are. In the name of our risen Lord, our Savior, our Redeemer, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Bless you, sir. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together for the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 I'm going to give you a little bit more. I know y'all can't take too much more. Glory to God. Because y'all really been already uh, exhorted and... Uh, and been encouraged, glory to God. So, hallelujah. So we're just going to pick up where we left off the last several weeks. Yes. Okay. Uh, we've kind of been in this same vein of teaching. Yes, sir. And we started out uh, in Matthew 25. In uh, uh, Matthew 25, verse 1, it says, The kingdom of God shall be likened unto the ten virgins. Uh, and so, uh, just a little bit out of what we got out of Matthew 25 in our past teachings yes. was this uh, when we talked about the ten virgins we talked about being watchful and being ready yes. right. okay right. and and so so many times what we need to understand when we're when we're reading these scriptures here when we're looking at this we have to see it out of the lenses of the Jewish nation the yes, Jewish sir. people yes, sir. okay we don't, we're westernized, so we don't look at it that way. But we have to, to get a full understanding of what was being taught, what was being said. Yes, sir. Uh, we, we, we have to try to view it that way. I know it's difficult, but we have to try uh, to understand what was the message that Jesus was conveying to his disciples. So he yes, had, sir. his disciples were with him, That's and, and he did a lot, a lot of great teaching, and uh, with his disciples, and he did a lot of teaching with his disciples that he did not teach to the multitude. Right. He would bring them separately, or they would come to him and they would ask him questions, and he would expound on those things. Uh, the great thing about the, the parallel between then and now is the fact that now we have the Holy Spirit, right. and the Holy Spirit is the one that will take these words off of the page and illuminate them to us. Yes, sir. So when it comes to the Holy Spirit uh, and having that relationship with the Holy Spirit, we need to understand that there is no time, 
there's no dimension, and there's no culture, and there's no nationality that he cannot transcend. Yes, sir. Right. Are you all right. with me? Right. Right. Okay. Right. Right. There's nothing that he can't transcend. So he can take what Jesus was teaching to them in the lenses of the Jewish people and the right. Jewish traditions and the Jewish wording, and he can bring it over here to this Western people, and he can give us an understanding of what he was saying at that time. Yes, so it, it's kind of like, what was it to them, and how does it apply to me today? Right. Yes, because he was giving them a message there, but that same message applies to me today. So when it comes to talking about the ten virgins, uh, the, just a little bit, and, and you got to understand what I'm saying here. I'm, I'm, I'm saying he, we just have a little bit. Yes, sir. That's all we have. We just have a little bit. Now, can we contain more? We can contain more, but we have to search more. We have to want more in order to get more. Yes. So out of these last five, six weeks, uh, uh, three things, three just three little points that we got out of Matthew 25, and there's so much more in there. <laughs> the three little things, let me put it this way, that I got out of it was being watchful yes, and sir. being ready. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So, yes, sir. so I, I got some. And then when it came uh, to talking about uh, the the master and the servants, okay, the 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 little piece that little part of that puzzle was being diligent. Yes, sir. Okay, it was being diligent. So yeah, so when we break these things down, and there's so much more in there, and hopefully. Uh, the Lord will permit us. We can actually dig in there and get some more information. But out of just out of the, uh, Matthew 25, the, the three points that we got was being watchful, being ready, and being diligent. Yes, right. right. Okay, all right. Being watchful because the Lord's going to return. We don't know when He's going to return, but we always got to be watchful for His return. Okay, right. and we got to be ready. Right. When He does return. Right. Now that could be. Returning when he comes back towards earth, okay? Right. Because we have uh, uh, two things that we're looking at. One of them we're looking at is the Lord is going to come towards earth. He's not coming to earth at that point. Yeah. He's just coming towards earth. Yeah. And that's when we are caught up with him yeah. to be with him forever. Yeah. And then there comes a second episode yes, when he comes to, to earth. earth. Yes, sir. Okay, y'all follow me. I didn't lose none of y'all. Okay. See what we're talking about. We're talking about, and this is the, the, the size of the end of the age. We call it eschatology. Okay. And I'm not a big eschatology teacher. I'm, I'm, I'm more of a kingdom teacher. So it kind of ties in because we're in the church age, but we're looking forward to the kingdom age. It's coming real soon. Okay. So it all ties in together. So there's a time when he's coming to earth, and when he's coming to earth, Okay, that's where we have to be watchful and we have to be ready to meet him when he comes. Right, right. Are y'all with me on that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. But in the meantime, he's delaying. He's not showing up just yet, but he's preparing. Yes, sir. He's waiting on the Father to give him the word to come. Yes, sir. Okay. So in the meantime, we still have to be ready. And you said, well, ready doing what? Well, when it came to the master and his servants, he told them plainly, do what you know to do. I've given you abilities. Yep. I've given you giftings. I've given you talents. I, I've given you purpose. I gave you a calling. There's something that you should be doing, so you have to be busy doing that. Okay? For everybody, it's different. Everybody, it's different. I don't want to do what Bishop does. <clears throat> I can't do what Bishop does. I, I, I can't do it. Bishop it has a total different calling than what I have. I can't do it. If I try to put on Bishop's shoes and walk in his shoes and do what he does, it's as if I'm committing suicide because I can't do it. I'm not built that way. Okay, I'm not I'm not designed that way. Yes, sir. I don't have that ability. Just like Bishop can't do what I do. No, sir. 
Okay, you just can't do it. When you hear these people talking about, well, I want such and such an anointing, and I want to do what such and such, you can't do it. You can't do it. You are literally committing suicide because you cannot. I've heard people say, man, I want to be like Bishop Jake. Man, to be like Bishop Jake, you got to go through what Bishop Jake went through to, to, to be like him or to get what he has. It, it can't happen. No. You're not designed that way. Right. So, so what we're talking about here is that you have to be doing according to your purpose. Amen. You got to be doing it. Yes, and so, when people talk about, well, I don't know what my purpose is. Okay. Well, then just start moving. Right. Yeah. Just start yeah. doing something. Okay. Yeah. Just to be. And, and, and to me, it's really, really kind of kind of elementary because if it's in my heart, then that's what I should be doing. Yes, Amen. If it's a desire, then that's what I should be doing. Yes, right. Now, are you going to be perfect at doing it starting off? No, you're not going to be. It's like riding a bike. You first got on a bike, you fell down a couple of times. You might have fell down a few times. Well, you might have got scraped up. You might have got hurt. You might have broke a, a shoulder or an arm or something, right, Nita? Oh. You might have done any of that kind of stuff, okay? But guess what? Once you learn how to ride a bike, you always know how to ride a bike. Right. And the right. more you ride the bike, the better you get at riding the bike. Yeah. Amen? Yes. So, so here's the thing. So if I have a desire, then I just start doing that. I just start moving in that direction. And the, be the more I do it, the better I get at it. Right. Amen? Amen? So, so... Uh, so be watchful, be ready, and be diligent. Yes, sir. That's what we got out of Matthew 25. Okay? That's what we got. But then we decided, well, you know what? In order to really fully understand 25, we got to go back to 24. Wow. Okay? Yes, so now the last couple of weeks, I mean, we've been doing this, I don't know, five, six weeks. I know Pastor Newsom did like three teachings on this, okay? And then Bishop came back and did a teaching, and I did a teaching, and... Yes. And, and then I'm going to have some of our other pastors, some of our other pastors, y'all are going to have to teach some of this too. Because yes. when we start talking about Matthew 24, 25, we're talking about the word eschatology, the end of the time, signs of the end of the time. Okay? Eschatology is not a new word. No. Eschatology has been around a long time. Okay? As a matter of fact, the, the, the believers, the, 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 the temple priests, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, even the disciples of Jesus actually studied an eschatology. Right. They right. knew there was going to be the signs of the time of the end of the age when Jesus was going to return. Yes. Okay? Or the king of the Jews was going to return and set up his earthly throne and he was going to reign on earth. They knew this. Why? Because they studied this. This is in Jeremiah, this is in Daniel, this is in Ezekiel, okay? They knew this. So what we're reading, you got to understand, they had already been reading this. They had already been looking at this, okay? They knew that it was coming. The only difference is, is that when they saw it coming and Jesus arrived and he starts fulfilling all these prophecies, they didn't think that it was going to be years off. Right. Okay? Centuries off. Okay, decades off, okay? They thought that it was just days. Yeah. Right. Okay. They thought this is just days, okay, that Jesus is gonna set up his earthly throne here on earth and rule and reign. Yeah. Okay. But actually they were wrong too. Right. Amen. And this is what Jesus is teaching them. Absolutely. He's teaching them eschatology, signs of the end of the time of the coming king the Jewish king to set up and rule and reign here on earth with his believers. What they didn't know is that he was going to expound it, okay, or expand, okay? Right. They didn't know he was going to expand it. They thought it was just set up for a certain group of people, but the father had a different plan. Right. I'm going to bring in some more people, okay? Yes. I'm going to establish a kingdom. So it's, it's really a bad thing if you have a king and he doesn't have no land. Right. Okay, a king has to have land. Yes. That right. makes him a king. And then a king has to have people. Right. He has to have somebody to rule over. Right. 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 Okay, right. so, so you got to have land and you got to have people. And how many of y'all know 
We serve the king of the Jews, the king of the believers, who <coughs> overflows in everything that he does. Amen. 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 More than enough. Not just a little bit, but more than enough. Amen. Amen. So his kingdom was, glory to God, I'll start with 12, but I'm not going to end with 12. No. Right. Okay. And that, that's that's right. his thought. Of course, they didn't understand that, okay, but that was his thought. They didn't realize that till after Pentecost, right. okay? Right. After Pentecost, and now they start getting a deeper revelation of what this kingdom is going to look like. And understand, they still didn't have the full picture. Right. They still didn't have full understanding. So, uh, we're going to go ahead and break off a little bit in Matthew 24. If y'all with me, let's start off. In verse 1, and it says, 24, 1, And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. So now we understand there's a temple, okay? Um, this temple was, they called the Temple Mount, okay? It was uh, on the top of the Mount of Olives, okay? Um, it took 80, 80 years to build this temple. Mm. Okay, it took 80 years to build this temple. This temple took up, 36 acres of land. Wow. Okay. This thing was huge. Okay. It was a huge complex. Okay. The pinnacle of the temple was over 90 feet. Okay. It was over 90 feet to the top of the temple. This is a place where Satan took Jesus, where he was tempted. He said, overlook all the land. Okay. I'll give you all this if you will bow down and worship me. Okay, and then that's where Satan uh, tempted him and said, "Well, cast yourself down." Okay, but understand where he wanted him to cast himself down from the top of the temple down to the bottom of what's called the Kidron Valley. Okay, wow. which is over 190 feet. Wow. Okay, and he told him, "Cast yourself down." Is it not written that the Lord will give His angels charge over thee? Right. And, of course, his response was with the word, okay, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Amen. 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 So you can see some pieces of the puzzle coming together. There's a lot, a lot of information in here, and it, and it will take us a long, long time to, to go through this. So so he's looking there, and he, and he has his disciples with him. Verse 2, and it says, And Jesus said unto them, See you not all these things? Uh, verily I say unto you, there shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. So they said they were amazed at the temple. Okay, they were amazed at the temple because this temple that was built was so ingrained in their culture. Their king had to have a temple. Okay, the king had to have a temple. So this temple to the Jewish people, we're looking at it out of the Jewish island. Yes. They had to believe that this temple was a sign to them that God was still present with them. Yes. Okay? Yes. That what that temple was represented to them. And then when Jesus comes back and said, hold on, stop. Okay? This whole thing is going to be destroyed. Okay? How, how, isn't that just like the Lord? The Lord gives you a promise, okay, and you're waiting on a promise, but he says, but hold on, one more thing. Uh -huh. All right, just, just hold on, not, not just yet, okay. It's coming. I promise you it's coming, but it's just not coming right now. Amen. Uh, but the promise is the promise. Right. Okay, the truth is the truth. <laughs> it's coming. It just ain't coming right now. So that kind of takes them back when he says, hold on now. He says, look at all this thing. It's magnificent. It's beautiful. Okay? It, 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 it takes up all this land. But I'm telling you that at one point, there will not be one stone left upon another. Mm. It, it was even written by Josephus that said that you could not, after the Romans plundered that temple, you would not even know that there was a temple there. Mm. You would not even know that there was a temple there. Yeah. Because when they torched it and it caught on fire, all the gold mm -hmm. that was in there melted it down and got into all the cracks of the stones. And so they wanted to get the gold. 
So they tore down every stone to get all the gold that was melted into all the cracks of the stones. Wow. Wow. Okay. And so, and so, thus fulfilling the prophecy that Jesus spoke. Right. Okay. I assure you that there will not be one stone left upon another stone. Which means they completely disassembled it and demolished it and tore it apart. Yes. Amen. Wow. So there go so now now there goes their hopes and dreams. Okay? Come on now. We have to have a temple. You got to you got to set up your throne someplace. But glory to God. How many of y'all know God had another plan? Amen. 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 And it says, and he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us when these things shall be, and what shall be the sign of your coming and of the end of the world. Okay? So, again, I, I, I need to look at this. So, it says, a sign of your coming. So, this word coming is actually, they, it means, when shall you appear unto us again? When are you going to manifest yourself? All right? I just don't want to know when you're coming. When are you going to arrive? Right. Okay? That's what they were saying. When are you arriving? Not just coming, letting us know you're coming. We already know you came. Amen? There's something about a king. When a king shows up, there has to be certain things, certain protocols that, that, that go before him. Okay? Say, for instance... You have to have a herald, one that announces the coming of the king, right? And we know that that was John the Baptist in the wilderness, right? That he was announcing, I'm not the one, but the one that comes after me. I'm not even able to latch uh, his, his strings on his shoes. I'm not, a, I'm not able to do that. But there's one that's coming. And so that was John the Baptist. That was his position. His position is, I'm not him, but guess what? The one that comes after me, that is him. Right. Amen. So he's already announcing the king is coming. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Okay. He was the one that announced to them. He's the one that told them, Behold, he has arrived. Amen. Okay. Now all of us are waiting for his arrival. We're still waiting. Yes. But that's okay. Glory to God. Because the longer we wait, it gives us a greater opportunity. To do what he's called us to do. So praise God for his delight. Yes. Oh, y'all ain't praising God for his delight. Amen. 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 Look, you know, it's like those people that say, well, you know what? I got time to get saved. Do you really got time to get saved? Okay. You don't know when your time is. Okay. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to shoot the dice. Okay. I got another day. I'll do it tomorrow. Mm. Well, tomorrow's not promised to anybody. Well, not Amen. Glory to God. Today might be the, the day that the Lord comes and calls upon you. Amen. Right. Because you are in the hands and the control of the Lord, not in your own. Amen. Right. Don't trust in your wisdom. Don't trust in man's wisdom, but trust in the wisdom of God. Amen. And so... They're, they're asking him, when, what's the sign of your arrival? We want you to arrive. And it kind of threw them off when they're standing there and they're watching the Lord ascend into heaven. Okay, because now they're thinking, well, you're leaving. But actually, you're supposed to be setting up your throne. Right. You're supposed to be here, but you're leaving. Praise God for his leaving. Praise God for his departure. Amen. Praise God. Glory to God. Because, see, some of us would have already been cut out of the fold. Amen. Some of us wouldn't be there. Glory to God. That's correct. And so he said, Jesus answered, said unto him, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Christ. Right. And shall deceive many. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. And you shall see, and you shall uh, be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So, there, so again, we're going to hear about wars, rumors of wars, we're going to pestilence, 
viruses, diseases. We're going to hear about fires and earthquakes and storms and tornadoes and tsunamis and all these things. We're going to hear about all these things, but it's not time. No. Amen. It's not time. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, according to uh, some of the commentaries I said, the things that we are experiencing now are nothing compared to what's going to happen when really the book of Revelation starts to be opened up, okay? Because, see, now we have a series of things. So when I'm talking about these end-time uh, eschatology, these end-time signs, you, you have to understand, you got to, to see Ezekiel and Jeremiah, you got to read Daniel, and you got to read Matthew, and then you got to go and you got to read Revelations, and you got to tie them all in together to understand that at some point, there's going to be seven seals that have to be opened up. Right. You're going to have seven trumpets that are going to have to blow. Right. And you're going to have seven bowls that are going to have to be poured out. And all of them are going to contain certain things that we must endure. Hopefully we don't have to endure. If you're a pre-tribulation person, glory to God, yes, we'll sir. be caught up and be with the Lord. Amen. Yeah, yeah. If you're mid-tribulation, glory to God, we're going to see a lot of this stuff. Amen. And those that want to go through the cold tribulation, Amen. praise God, there's a promise for them too that be they saved. also can be saved. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Those are the ones that we talk about being hard-headed and not understanding. Okay. Sort of like our kids when we talk about our kids. I'm telling you, this is going to happen. No, it's not going to happen. Yes, it is going to happen. I'm telling you, this is what's going to take place. And they keep arguing, keep doing what they're doing. But at the end of the day, glory to God, they got to come back and say, yeah, you were right. You, know? right. you said it was going to happen. Praise yeah. God. And it did happen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And that's just like our church people. We tell them, don't do this. Yeah. Don't do this. Yeah. Don't do this. Okay. Yeah. I'm telling you, don't do this. It's not going to end well for you. Don't do it. Glory to God. But they keep doing it. Praise God that the days are extended. Amen. Praise God that you got another day. Glory to God. And so as we begin to look at this, okay, we begin to see a lot more. Amen. So I, I got about 10 minutes. Uh, and then I'm going to close out. Uh, there's a lot to be seen here, to be heard here. Glory to God. And I definitely cannot go into it all right now. But I want to get to this place right here. The disciples were concerned about a temple. Yes. Okay. That was their assurance that God had not departed them. That was their assurance that Jesus was going to come back and set up his throne. And all those things are going to happen. All those things must happen because he said he's going to do those things. Amen. But in the meantime, the Lord says, I'm setting up another temple. A temple not made by hands. Right. Okay. And in Acts chapter 7, yes. it says, in verse 48, it said, How be it, the Most High dwelleth not in temples made, made with hands, hands, says the prophet. Yes. Amen. Yes. So if they've been studying this and understanding some things here, a lot of us, like us today, we don't fully understand everything. Amen. But they would understand that God is creating a temple and you are the temple. Amen. 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 You are the temple Amen. of the Holy Ghost. Yes. He will set up an earthly temple. Okay, yes. It will be there. Glory to God. But in the meantime, amen, there's another temple that is being built. There's another temple that's being sanctified. There's another temple that's being uh, a man. There's another temple that's being filled, and that's who you are. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. And right now, the Lord dwells in you. You dwell in Him. We are empowered by the Spirit of God. He has called us to Himself. We are not made, He is not coming to dwell in a temple made by hands. He doesn't have to. Why? Because He's the one that created us. Amen. Amen. He's the one that destined us. He's the one that purposed us. Amen. He's the one that said, I'm coming to live on the inside of you. As a matter of fact, we don't even have the opportunity to choose Him. He chose us. Glory to God, the Bible says, before the foundations of the earth. I was chosen. You were chosen. Glory to God. 
He comes to live on the inside of us right now. Amen? Amen. And that's Amen. where we are. Glory to God. We are the temple of God. Amen? Yes. Yes. Not made by human hands, right. but we were created by our Heavenly Father. We are a spirit being living in this earthly temple, housing the spirit of God, right. the life of God, the zoe of God, the love of God, the peace of God. That's why it's impossible for you to be possessed by a devil mm -hmm. because God is not going to share his temple no, with no devil. Amen? Right, right, right. He's not going to do it. The Bible says he is a jealous God. Amen? Right, right. And he's jealous for you. Glory right. to God. Yeah. He loves you. He wants you more than anything else. Glory to God. You are the apple of his eye. You yeah. are his greatest creation. Yes. There is none like you and can never be anybody else to replace you. You are who you are, and God created you to be his. Amen? Right. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we love you and we glorify you. We thank you Excellent. for this opportunity to share in this word. Glory to God. To share with you, Father God. Just to be part of who you are. Just so that you can live in us. Hallelujah. I am honored that you have chosen me to be a temple. You have chosen me to be a dwelling place. You have chosen me for your <coughs> spirit to inhabit, to live in, to be in. Yes. Father, we love you and we bless you and we thank you and we glorify you and we worship you today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, glory to God. Amen. Come on, give God a shout of praise. Those of y'all that are watching, glory to God, we bless you today in the name of Jesus. We pray that you receive something from the word of God today. We declare that the presence of God, the love of God, the joy of God, his anointing rests yes. upon you today. Everything that you're going through, we break it off of your life today. We declare you to be free. Who the Son has set free is free indeed. You are free in the Lord in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you and we bless you. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. God bless you. We love you all. Thank you all for joining in with us today here at Ministries International. We greet the Gomez's in Florida, uh, uh, Dr. Newside in, uh, in uh, New Orleans, uh, Louisiana. Uh, we bless him. Those of y'all that are joining with us today, we bless y'all today. Thank you for taking the time to yes. join in with us today. Yes. You just don't know how much we appreciate uh, your presence and uh, your listening to what we have to say today. Bless you and we'll see you next time.